Sanam Limited is a technology developer located 10 miles east of Edinburgh. And for the last 10 years, we have been designing, developing and manufacturing thermal energy storage devices that we call heat batteries. So heat batteries uh, are made up of uh, chemicals that will change their phase. They will move from a liquid to a solid and back to a liquid, storing heat and releasing heat for later use. Over the 10 years, we have manufactured, um, developed and are now manufacturing chemical salts that melt and freeze at a given temperature and turn from a liquid to a solid state to release the heat and from a solid state to a liquid state to store heat for later use. The materials are contained in devices we call heat batteries. Uh, within these devices, we have mechanisms that enable you to connect into a circuit, a fluid circuit, which may be run in a hot liquid, and to take the heat out of the liquid and store that, and to put that heat back into the liquid on demand. Over the first five years, we spent working very closely with Edinburgh University's chemistry department to develop a portfolio of phase change materials that will melt and freeze at different temperatures. We then went to look for specific applications. So the first application was to look at residential. So within residential, in the UK, 60% of our home energy needs is heat. So we look for space heating and hot water. One of the, the storage mechanisms for your heat in your home is a water tank. And these tend to be large devices you find in your, in your airing cupboards. But what we're able to do, because our materials are four times more energy dense than water, we can actually reduce the size of the package to store the same amount of energy. So you could have a 100 litre water tank with a 25 litre equivalent heat battery. That's really useful if you've got apartments where you're restricted on space. Once we looked at, the, look at substituting water tanks with heat batteries, we looked at how we could capture the waste energy from PV. So from photovoltaic, solar panels on your roof, a lot of that heat has been, uh, that energy has been generated, which you can use when the sun's shining, but when the sun's shining, you, it's not gonna operate at all. So what we can do is take some of that energy, we can turn it into heat, we can store it in our devices, and we use it then to warm up the room, space heating and to provide you the hot water for your showers and everything else. Today, SunAMP employs 50 people. Um, we have material scientists, electronic engineers, a whole skill set, plus manufacturing, and we're manufacturing hundreds of heat batteries each week, supplying them into housing associations, to building contractors, to uh, house builders, where we're looking at ways that we can time shift energy purchase to save the, the householder money capture waste heat from different sources, or support things like heat pumps. There's a huge shift now to the degasification of central heating and the introduction of heat pumps. Heat pumps, though, in cold weather tend to be very ineffective, inefficient, so the introduction of a heat battery with a heat, heat pump provides a very efficient system. For the f last five years, I've been trying to take that technology, which is now tried and tested in the residential market, and to put it onto a vehicle. So if we begin to look at vehicles, and we're looking at vehicles in two types. You've got the traditional combustion engine vehicles, and now you've got the, 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 the electric vehicles. So with combustion engine, and uh, the combustion engine vehicles, they're trying to reject heat. So a, a petrol engine, or a diesel engine, 60% of its engine, and the energy that it generates is going out through the coolant circuit all down the exhaust pipe. So you're wasting so much energy. So what we'd be able to do is connect into the coolant circuit, take the heat, store the heat, then use that heat to fast warm up the engine. What do we gain by fast warming the engine? When an engine's cold, it's emitting its highest level of emissions. By the time it gets to its optimal operating temperature, where the catalytic converter is hot enough to burn off the nasties, can take five, 10 minutes to achieve that. We've done tests where we're able to actually fast warm the engine in a minute. Yeah, and we recently completed a piece of work 
where we were looking at the future Euro 7 legislation, which will look at a time to optimum temperature of 200 seconds, and we can achieve that by using stored heat. That's great. We're reducing the emissions, which is, which is great. But the future is going through to electric vehicles. With electric vehicles, your challenge is one of weather conditions. This vehicle here is for operation by supermarkets and last mile delivery. It has a finite range based on the amount of energy that they can store in the traction battery on the vehicle. However, when it's cold, you have to look after the driver comfort and the driver safety. That what means when, when heating is required, you can turn on the heater and you can heat the cabin. When you need to demist the windscreen, you can turn on the heating and demist de the windscreen. However, that heating has been provided through an electric heater system that's pulling the power from the traction battery. So the more heating I demand, the colder it is outside, the only power I get in is out of the, out of the traction battery, and that's going to re reduce my range. As you go sub-zero, your range reduces minus 10, it might be 20%, minus 20, it could be 30% reduction, minus 40, you're down to 40% reduction in the range of the vehicle. On the other side of it, these goods are carrying goods and their refrigeration systems on the vehicle. And the issue with the refrigeration system is that the power for the refrigeration system once again is coming from the traction battery. The hotter it is outside, the more demand it is for cold on, on this vehicle, and the only power again is coming from the traction battery, which impacts the range of the vehicle. So if I'm a vehicle operator and I'm looking to uh, shift from combustion engine vehicles, which I know and love and what can do, you know, I can fill up a tank in five minutes and drive 300 miles, suddenly I can adopt electric vehicles. I will see the range of the vehicle, this 125 miles, but as soon as it starts getting cold, my range is going to drop to 80 miles, and as soon as it's getting hot and I have to run my refrigeration harder, it's going to reduce the range as well. So what we've done here is taken the residential heating technology and we put it onto the vehicle. That device on the side there is, holds about five kilowatt hours of heat. So when the driver demands the heat, he's getting the heat from the, that battery that's mounted on the side of the vehicle, which has been made by connecting it into the grid to create the heat. So as I mentioned with the combustion engine, we can capture heat that's already been rejected. An EV vehicle doesn't reject a lot of heat. So what we do is plug into the grid and we use grid power to, with a, an element inside our device and that then melts our, our material inside, it stores the heat and we have the heat on demand. So when the driver says, I want heat, the heat comes from that. The traction battery is not affected Therefore, we're giving it range consistency in cold conditions. So on the other side, what we're doing is, is that we're taking a standard refrigeration system and we basically integrated a cold battery into it. So we can store cold as well as we can store hot. So we have a cold battery integrated into the system and we improved the energy efficiency of that system. In fact, when we had two identical vehicles with the same refrigeration system, one adapted with our technology. When we recharge the vehicle, we use 30% less energy. 30% less energy equates to longer operating time, longer vehicle range in hot weather conditions. So the, the EV challenge of weather conditions on the range of the vehicle has been offset by us making cold or making heat to be able to provide driver comfort and safety and to keep the frozen peas frozen. Okay, so from a fleet operator's perspective, they want to try to get the same performance from an electric vehicle as they've got the performance from a diesel vehicle. They know they can't go as far yeah, with it and they know they're going to have to change their, their planning and the, how they drop and where they drop, but they want to have this, the confidence that if the vehicle states that it does 125 miles, 
it would do the 125 miles in all conditions. Not having to deal with the, the, the fact that it's cold outside. Today, I'm only going to be able to do 80 miles. I've got to change my whole delivery patterns and plans for the day to be able to meet the requirements. So what we're doing is giving this consistency back for the vehicle. 